Today we're going to be learning more about Bitcoin. Have you heard of it? Have you dove into this topic? If you have, great, but if you haven't, here's a little bit of an introduction to Bitcoin, what it is, why people invested in it, and why it might be the currency of the future. All right, so what is Bitcoin? What the heck is it? What's the hype about it? All Bitcoin is, is a form of digital currency. Okay, so money is currency, but this is digital currency that aims to eliminate the need for central authorities such as banks or governments. Okay, so it's just a type of currency. It is money. It's the money of the future, right? And so it's all digital. It's all online. There would not be any cash, nothing to that nature. Okay, and so and it's these coins that are transferred. And so the reason that people want that is because they don't want the central authorities like the banks or the governments to be in control. They're just saying, hey, we don't need the banks. We don't need the government. All we need is this digital currency and we're good and we can still exchange items and buy things and purchase goods, etc. So how does this digital currency, how does Bitcoin work? So typically Bitcoin uses blockchain technology to support peer to peer transactions between users at a decentralized network. So it's not centralized. So it's not with the government or with the banks and it's peer to peer. So maybe you can think of something like Venmo or something. It's a person to a person, but it's on a different and a broader scale. And this Bitcoin technology or that we talk about the blockchain. Okay. So do you guys know what a blockchain is? Let's talk about that quickly. So a blockchain at its core is a ledger, okay? So a ledger, it is a list of data points and currency information. It's kind of like a bookkeeping record, right? In the past or like accounting and things, it has the records or this data. That's what it does. So the blockchain is a ledger and it keeps all of this information, all these data points and information, and then it uses it to track things, etc. And then these transactions, they're authenticated. So you have to make sure it's legit, it's legal, it's all working. And so it's authenticated through Bitcoin's proof of work consensus mechanism, okay, which rewards the cryptocurrency miners for validating transactions. So they need to validate the transactions and make sure they're legit. Okay, so now that you know a little bit about Bitcoin and blockchain and what the heck cryptocurrency is and why people want to use it, when was it launched? So it actually wasn't launched la last year or a few years ago. It was launched and developed in 2009. It was launched by a mysterious developer. His name was Satoshi Nakamoto, Satoshi Nakamoto. Sorry if I pronounced the name wrong. Um, and he developed Bitcoin. Okay. And it was the first, and it actually still remains the most valuable in the emerging class of assets. Okay. And so assets, we talk about on this channel, getting assets. Okay. And so Bitcoin is technically an asset and something you can invest in. We talk about index funds and just going with the index funds. It typically gets a 10% return over time. And that alone will make you millions or multiple millions of dollars, right? If you just stick with that strategy, but some people like to day trade or they like to pick individual stocks. And so some people chose to take Bitcoin. Okay. And some people made a ton of money on Bitcoin, especially over the last few years, but then most recently it's gone down and down and down. And so some people sold and typically the strategy is not recommended. Typically it's recommended to just get those index funds buy and hold throughout the market. And eventually you'll get your money back. Um, but it's a big risk to get these individual stocks and specifically Bitcoin. And so most professionals and advisors recommend, Hey, they recognize this could be a cool thing. This could end up being something and could, um, money could be decentralized and not be with the government or with the banks anymore. Um, but they're not sure. And so some people, especially really wealthy people will invest a small portion of their portfolio, um, typically like 1% of their portfolio, but then the rest is in assets like real estate or in businesses or in actual um, stocks that have been shown and proven to bring money back over time and have good returns. Um, but if you want to for fun, go for it. And honestly, this is, it's totally your choice and it's your option. Some people have it just for fun and who knows then if it does become something, you do have some skin in the game that can hopefully help you moving forward. But um, this is just an introductory, like learning what is cryptocurrency and if you think it would be helpful to you. And just so you have a little bit of knowledge, we talk about getting a little bit of knowledge on everything. And so I definitely want to share this like AI, we'll be talking about some information about AI and how you can learn more about it or how you can use it because it's definitely going to, it's already starting to be used. And the same thing with Bitcoin and blockchain technologies and cryptocurrencies.
Okay, so another component of this Bitcoin, we've talked about blockchains, but here's a little more information on blockchains in detail in the definition. And so Bitcoin is powered by this open source code. So it's code, right? If you were, I was a software test engineer for a little bit, so very familiar with coding, but you might understand some of the coding aspects. It's known as blockchain. So it's a type of code. Like we had Java, we had Ruby, we had these types of codes that we would put in, but it's, the code is this blockchain, right? And so we've talked about it. It creates a shared public history, right? It's a ledger. It has this record, these data points of transactions organized into blocks and they're chained together to prevent tampering. And so these engineers design this. So, right, like just like in a bank, it shows your transaction history. It would do the same thing with your digital currency and with your Bitcoins, okay? And this technology that is created or that would be in place is the goal is to have a permanent record and of the transaction. So you always have it and it provides a way for every Bitcoin user to operate with the same understanding of who owns what. So it's about ownership. Remember, this is an asset, right? Money and these coins are assets. And so you can't forget about that, that it is an asset and it's about ownership. So another component is private and public keys. So a Bitcoin wallet contains a public key and a private key which works together to allow the owner to initiate or to start and engage with a digitally signed transaction. And so this unlocks the central function of the Bitcoin, which securely transfers ownership from one user to another. So you want more Bitcoins, you want more assets, and you are transferring them to other people or individuals based on um, different services. And the last component is Bitcoin mining. So how do they verify these things like all these transactions and you have to have the code set up and the blockchain and all of these things, and the fancy things behind the scenes. But how do you make sure this is all legit and it's working and there's no complications? And what if you transfer this money, but then it doesn't work or whatever? It's through Bitcoin mining. And so users on the Bitcoin network they verify the transactions through a process known as mining. Okay, so that's how they verify. They make sure everything's okay. They mine, which is designed to confirm that the new transactions are consistent with the other transactions that have been completed in the past. So they make sure that the transactions are consistent. This ensures that you can't spend a Bitcoin that you don't have or that you previously spent. So there's a lot more details and nitty gritty on that, but that is the system that's in place to verify and to make sure everything's working properly and everyone's transfers and assets go to the right place. One reason people like this is because of the independent nature of this and having the independent miners, they're able to verify things more easily and there's a lot less risk for fraud or for problems like that, which can be common um, with how the current system works right now. So the goal of this was to provide a solution and to think differently, right? And I always encourage you guys, sometimes we don't need to reinvent the wheel and sometimes just doing what has worked for other people is really a great option. But sometimes like your ideas and the things you're thinking about right like blockchain who thought of this right and this could be the new currency of the new age in a few years or in decades who knows and so it's just important to learn and to be um, engaged and just kind of see what these things are all about so that you can be more equipped and prepared for whatever happens and maybe to advocate for something so I don't know what do you guys think about bitcoin do you like it do you not are you like this kind of sounds funky do you want more information on it do you want me to do a deeper dive on this and of course, there's so many different types of coins. You've heard of Dogecoin. You've heard of just the, there's a huge range of cryptocurrencies. And so it can be a little bit complex, um, but that's okay. And you just need to be aware and move through it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Feel free to ask any questions or share any information that you know. I'm just sharing things that I'm learning or that I've learned that could hopefully help you to be more educated, empowered, and aware so you can make better choices for yourself and your life. Um, feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share with a friend and subscribe for more videos like this on improving yourself and your life. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. You got this.